for the 13th time since I became pastor from master here, we're doing a baptism. So you should have in your folder what you should now be coming very familiar with is the order of service for baptism. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Lord commanded baptism, saying to his disciples in the last chapter of Matthew, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. Surely I will be with you always to the very end of the age. The holy apostles of the Lord have written, The promise is for you and for your children. And baptism now saves you. We also learn from the word of God that we are all conceived and born sinful and are in need of forgiveness. We would be lost forever unless delivered from sin, death, and everlasting condemnation. But the Father of all mercy and grace has sent his Son, Jesus Christ, who atoned for the sin of the whole world, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Receive the sign of the Holy Cross both upon your forehead and upon your heart, to mark you as one redeemed by Christ the crucified. Hear how our Lord Jesus Christ has opened the kingdom of God to little children. People were bringing little children to Jesus to uh, have him touch them, but the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he was indignant. He said to them, Let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. I tell you the truth, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Dear sponsors, it is your task as sponsors to confess with the whole church the faith in our God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, in whose name this child is to be baptized. After this child has been baptized, you are to you are at all times to remember him in your prayer, put him in mind of his baptism, and as much as in you lies, give your counsel and aid, especially if he should lose his parents, that he be brought up in the true knowledge and worship of God. This then do you intend gladly and willingly to do? Then answer yes. Yes. I'll give you the certificates right away. And to your parents, as parents of this child, our Lord has also placed before you a tremendous responsibility as well. Not only to feed and clothe his mortal body, but most importantly, to care for his immortal soul. That he be taught the Ten Commandments, the Creed, and the Lord's Prayer. And that as he grows in years, you place in his hands the Holy Scriptures, bring him to the services of God's house, and provide for his further instruction in the Christian faith. That he, be, that he come to the sacrament of Christ's body and blood, and thus abiding in his baptismal grace and in communion with the church, he may grow up to lead a godly life to the praise and honor of Jesus Christ. This then be you intend gladly and willingly to do, then answer yes. yes. God enable all of you both to will and to do this faithful and loving work, and with his grace fulfill what we are unable to do. In order to implore the blessing of our Lord Jesus Christ upon the gathering of this child and of the family of our Father, let us, with all the family, pray the prayer that he gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord preserve your coming in and your going out from this time forth, and even forevermore. Amen. Because this child cannot answer for himself, we shall all together with sponsors and parents faithfully speak on his behalf in testimony of the forgiveness of sins and the birth of life of the, of the life of faith, which God our Father bestows in and through baptism. Grayson, 
Do you renounce the devil and all his works and all his ways? Do you believe in God the Father Almighty? Yes, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son? Yes, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? Yes, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of Christ. Who brings this child to be baptized? How is this child to be named? Grayson okay. Henry Rivard, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with His grace to life everlasting. Peace be with you. Amen. Receive this white cloth to show that Christ has washed away all of your sins and put upon you His perfect righteousness. So shall you in faith ever stand before Him. And we bow our heads in prayer. Almighty and merciful God and Father, we thank and praise you that you graciously preserve and enlarge your family and have granted Grayson the new birth and holy baptism and made him a member of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and an heir of your heavenly kingdom. We humbly pray you that as he has now become your child, you would keep him in his baptismal grace, that according to all your good pleasure, he may grow to lead a godly life to the praise and honor of your holy name, and finally with all your saints obtain the promised inheritance in heaven, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord and giver of life, look with kindness upon the father and mother of this child and upon all our parents. Let them ever rejoice in the gift you have given them. Enable them to be teachers and examples of righteousness for their children. Strengthen them in their own baptism so that they may share eternally with their children the salvation you have given them. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Through baptism, God has added Grayson Henry Rivard to his own people to declare the wonderful deeds of our Savior, who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. We welcome you into the Lord's family. We receive you as a fellow member of the body of Christ, a child of the same Heavenly Father, to work with us in his kingdom. And you, Grace, and the Lord bless you in all your ways from this time forth and even forevermore. Amen. We continue with our regular liturgy. Shall we rise? Our liturgy is on page 151 in your hymnal. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. 
We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We take the insert from our bulletins and we join in the intro for today. The Lord has made known his salvation. He has revealed his righteousness in the sight of the nations. Let the sea roar and all that fills it. The world and those who dwell in it. Let the rivers clap their hands. Let the hills sing for joy together before the Lord. For he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness. And the peoples with equity. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord has made known his salvation. He has revealed his righteousness. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord.
O Lord, graciously hear the prayers of your people that we who justly suffer the consequences of our sins may be mercifully delivered by your goodness to the glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.
lesson is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 3. But I, brothers, could not address you as spiritual people, but as people of the flesh, as infants in Christ. I fed you with milk, not solid food, for you were not ready for it. And even now you are not yet ready, for you are still of the flesh. For while there is jealousy and strife among you, are you not of the flesh and behaving only in a human way? For when one says, I follow Paul, and another, I follow Apollos, are you not being merely human? What then is Apollos? What is Paul? Servants through whom you believed, as the Lord assigned to each. I planted Apollos water, but God gave the growth. So neither he who plants nor he who waters is anything, but only God who gives the growth. He who plants and he who waters are one, and each will receive his wages according to his labor. For we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field, God's building. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We rock. If your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. For it is better that you lose one of your members than that your whole body be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. For it is better that you lose one of your members than that your whole body go to hell or go into hell. It was also said, whoever divorces his wife, let him give her a certificate of divorce. But I say to you that everyone who divorces his wife, except on the grounds of sexual immorality, makes her commit adultery, and whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. Again, you have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not bear falsely, or you shall not swear falsely, but shall perform to the Lord what you have sworn. But I say to you, do not take an oath at all either by heaven, for it is the throne of God, or by the earth, for it is his footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. And do not take an oath by your own head, for you cannot make one hair white or black. Let what you say be simply yes or no. Anything more than this comes from evil. This is the word of the Lord.
First things first. I get really frustrated with gospel lessons that get torn out of context like this one. I don't know who put up the schedule of what passages should be read for which services and all of that kind of stuff, the pericope system. But every so often they really blow it. And this is one of those cases. Because if you take these words of our gospel lesson out of context, it can cause you to do all kinds of weird stuff with these passages, let me tell you. The context includes what was the last part of last Sunday's gospel lesson as we're working through the Sermon on the Mount. And it continues beyond what our gospel lesson for today is. And you need that context in order to understand this gospel. That's the first problem I have with this. So let me read to you the beginning of this section so you begin to see the context of what Jesus is talking about when he says, but I say to you, because those are the words of Jesus that we really want to focus on today. Jesus starts out this section, actually in verse 17. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For truly I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not an iota, not a dot, will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever relaxes one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not murder, and so on. You see, in its context, what Jesus is doing here is he is focusing on the law of God and what it truly means. Every iota and dot of the law. And he uses what is in our text as examples of what that is and what that means. And basically what that means is, I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Now, with that thought in mind, look at what's here. And when I look at what's here, here's my second problem with this gospel lesson. There is not one ounce of gospel in it. It is 100% completely law. And it is law to the nth degree. This is not, when Jesus is talking here, this is not the spirit of the law. This is the letter of the law. This is the law. Every dot, till every I dotted, every T cross, this is the judgment law. This is the law that you and I will stand under on judgment day before God. And you're going to hear right now about the closest thing I'm ever going to come to a fire and brimstone sermon. I'm sorry for guests who are here who would like to hear only good God and all this. This is not normal Lutheranism, but it should be. Okay? Here we go. What does Jesus say? But I say. Humanity has a tendency to play with God's law. 
And Jesus is correcting that false assumption. You cannot play with God's law. It is God's law. It is meant to be as it is declared by God. You don't do anything with it but keep it. And here's how you keep it. And he gets basically three commandments in a gospel lesson. Now, if you read on past our gospel lesson, he picks up a couple more commandments as well. <clears throat> but he picks out three for now, basically because these were three that the Pharisees played around with a lot. And as you'll see, humanity today does too. Okay? You shall not murder. Whoever murders is liable to judgment. Pharisee said, you got to kill a person. you got to deliberately take their life to break that commandment. Fifth commandment. I say to you, Jesus says, everyone who is angry with his brother is liable to judgment. This commandment isn't about just taking life physically. This commandment deals with the heart in any way in which you in your heart or in your mind or in your attitude have a negative uh, view toward another individual. You are a murderer. That's what Jesus is saying here. You get angry with somebody, that's murder. You insult somebody, that's murder. You call somebody an idiot or a fool. That's murder. In God's eyes, that's murder. You don't like your boss at work? That's murder. You have trouble with somebody and there's a neighbor. That's murder. That's crossing the T's and dotting the I. That's what God looks at. Are you there? One of the things we've heard in these meetings so far, these legacy meetings, is a split within this congregation over the last building program. And you have people on one side and people on the other side of that issue, and there is what? Tension and anxiety or whatever between those people in this congregation. That's murder. That is a violation of the fifth commandment. The people of this congregation are murderers. That's what Jesus is saying here. That's the law of God. Adultery? It's not just a physical, sexual thing where you have sex outside of marriage. And we don't even need to talk about the ideas of living together or open sexuality or gender identification stuff, or homosexuality, or any of those kinds of things that are going on in our world today. He says, you look at another woman, or another man, let's put it for both, because Jesus means it that way. In his society, he would talk the one way, against the man, specifically. But even in our society today, we don't need to talk about pornography and other kind of things like that. You look at a woman incorrectly. <coughs> You're an adulterer. Period. You go sit in a mall and people watch and somebody goes by and you say, whoa, that's, and all of a sudden the mind goes there, that's adultery. That's a sin before God. That's what Jesus is saying here. And for married people, 
You have any thought or idea that is negative towards your wife, that you wish it were different or whatever, that's adultery. That is not being faithful to your marriage. You're an adulterer in God's eyes. And if you get a divorce, boy, he hits that one hard, doesn't he? If it is not specifically, if it is not specifically for sexual immorality that that spouse did something sexual with another individual, if it's for any other reason than that, then you're the adulterer for giving the divorce. And not only are you the adulterer, but you cause the other person to also be an adulterer. And if either of you get married again, whoever your spouses are, you cause them to become adulterers too. And for as long as that lasts, you live as an adulterer. Every breath you take is a breath of an adulterer in the eyes of God. You just don't commit adultery. You are an adulterer. That's the law of God. Every dot cut, every I dotted, and every T crossed. In God's eyes, that's where the law is at, Jesus says. Don't swear, he says. Goodness sakes, just tell the truth. Just let your guess be guessing or don't know. Anything else is evil. Because what are you, who are you going to call on for all of the evil swearing that you do? God in heaven? The earth which is God's footstool? Whatever? Come on. You have no right to do any of that. You do evil. If your brother has anything against you, huh? Anything, if it's your wife, if it's your kids, if it's your parents, whatever, if your brother has anything against you, he says, and you think you can come into God's church? Do your prayers, sing your hymns, bring your offerings, kneel at the communion rail. Everything is hunky-dory? No. Until you go and be reconciled to that person who has anything against you, any person you have sinned against, if you don't reconcile with that, you have no business here. Get that taken care of first, then you come. Because until you take that care of that first, you aren't worthy to come here. That's the law of God. No wonder he says it would be better if you plucked out your arms or cut off your hands. So you couldn't see him do anything. You'd have a better chance of getting into heaven. <sighs> He hasn't even talked about the fourth commandment and your relationship and your attitude and so on towards your parents or your kids or your government. Well, now there's a good one. Wouldn't you even today hit that fourth commandment? Democrats versus Republicans, the president versus our governor or whatever. You have any kind of animosity against them. You're not only breaking the fifth commandment, you're breaking the fourth commandment. And our greed today, our desire for things and so on, seventh commandment. Are you beginning to squirm a little bit? <coughs> Are you beginning to realize what and who you are before God when Jesus lays out the, ten, the commandments this way? 
When he says, not an iota, not a dot of the law will pass away until it is accomplished. And when he gets to the end of this whole section, he ends it with these words. You therefore must be perfect. Not you should be. You therefore must be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. I don't know about you, but that hits hard, doesn't it? When you take the law the way Jesus takes it, the way Jesus preaches it, you and I have got to realize that we aren't just, we aren't good people who have a lot of junk sin on top of us. We are, in, the God, in God's eyes, the junk. We don't have slime and stuff on us. We are the slime before God. That's who we are. And because we are that kind of slime, because we are every last one of us, and this guy is included. Don't say that I am a you know, holier than thou kind of guy preaching down at anybody. No, I'm preaching this sermon to me too because Jesus is preaching this sermon to me too. We are all, always, 100% of the time, every minute of every day that we take a breath on this life, we are murderers, adulterers, thieves, liars. You go down the commandments. And none of us has a right to be in this room, in this building right now. On that basis. Can you understand why Paul would say in Romans, Wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? Because that's where every one of us should be right now. Because there is absolutely no way any of us could enter the kingdom of heaven. We cannot do it. And if I was going to be true to this text, I would have to say amen right now. Because I said there is not an ounce of gospel in this gospel lesson. Not an ounce. There's not an ounce of good news there. You and I are the slime of the earth in the eyes of God. We deserve nothing but eternal damnation. Period. And that's the law of God. I am so <coughs> thankful that I can say, but I can go beyond this text. I can say with Paul, because these are the very next words out of his mouth. When he said, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death and the anguish of facing who he is and what he is in the eyes of the law? His next words out of his mouth are, thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Thanks be to God for Jesus Christ our Lord. Because you see, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish. Do you understand that phrase now? Should not perish. But have eternal life. 
For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through Him. Jesus says, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to what? Fulfill them. Jesus did what you and I could not do. Jesus fulfilled the law. Jesus kept it. Every dot, every T crossed, every aspect of the letter of the law, Jesus did it for you and me. He didn't come to condemn us because of our sin. But he wanted us to know our sin and to know the absolute depth of it. Because when we know the absolute depth of it, when we don't play with God's law, when we don't try to mediate it, when we don't try to justify ourselves in front of it, but when we actually accept what and who we are before God according to His law, then, then the cross, the good news of the gospel, then and only then, can we say, thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. We can know with Paul, for by grace you have been saved through faith. It is not your own doing. It is a gift of God, not a result of works. So that no one may boast. And again, shortly after he says, wretched man, and thanks be to God, he comes out with these words, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. <coughs> As I preached this sermon, were you feeling condemned? But in Christ there is no condemnation. That's the wonder of our faith. That's the wonder of what Christ did on the cross for us. That's the good news in the midst of a law that kills and damns. Good news. No condemnation. Jesus has suffered and died and took away all of that for you and me. And not because we deserve to be here, but because Christ has washed us clean in his blood, do we have the privilege to be here? Do we have the privilege to bring our prayers and bring our offerings and kneel at the communion rail and sing the hymns? That is all by the grace of God in Christ Jesus. Do you understand how special the gospel is? How wonderful our Savior is? And what he has done for you and me. in the face of the letter of the law. Thanks be to God. In Jesus Christ, amen. And may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ. Not in the law, but in Christ. For only in Him. Only in is there any kind of life at all? Amen. Since we did the confession of our faith in connection with the baptism, we will continue now with our offering.
We rise for prayer. Heavenly Father, we do not deserve to be here. We do not have the right to even call you Heavenly Father, let alone come to your altar and pray to you. We don't deserve this because we are sin embodied. And yet here we are. Here we are, confidently coming to your throne to bring our prayers to you because of Jesus. Because in him we have been washed clean. Our sin is gone. He took it to the cross and he died for it. We are forgiven. Lord, help us never to lose sight of the privilege that we have to be your children. That you have loved us so much that you sent your Son to die for us. You sent your Holy Spirit into our hearts that we may believe in him. And you have made us in our baptisms your children. What a blessing. What a blessing that we have from you. Lord, help us now as your children to not put the law aside and use it as cheap grace to do whatever we want, but let us look again at the law that you have set before us, see it as it is, and seek to live for you. Because you have lived for us. Give us a heart that seeks to be your children. To live like your children. To keep those commandments. No, we will never keep them perfectly. But help us to do better each and every day. Thank you, Lord, that we can live each day in the forgiveness of our sins. Lord, let us be a light into our world. Help us in all of our troubles and trials. Give us wisdom for the decisions we make each and every day. May all of it be to your honor and your glory. Be with those who are ill or dying. Grant them your grace and your presence. Lord, we pray for Edith Forbes, who is on her deathbed. We ask that you would give her not a heart of fear because of her sins, but a heart of peace and joy because of Jesus. Be with her in these last days of her life. Grant her your grace and your mercy. Keep us, Lord. Keep us as your children. Do not let sin overwhelm us again. Bless us. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. We now have the privilege of coming to the Lord and receiving the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, so that there can be no condemnation. We follow the service of the sacrament on page 160 in your hymnal. The Lord be with you.
through Jesus Christ our Lord. For what had been hidden from before the foundation of the world you have made known to the nations in your Son. In Him being found in the substance of our mortal nature, you have manifested the fullness of your glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing.
who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace.
But do come, do be a part of this process. It's important that you do. And for the future of Trinity, I really think it's important that you do. God's blessings to you. There will be a couple more. The sign-up sheets are in the back there if you want to sign up. If you don't, if you haven't signed up and don't know for sure what, which one you can come to, but you decide on the spur of the moment to come to one, come. You do not have to sign up to come. The sign-up is just to help us get an idea of how many people may be there. Okay? With those, announce, with those encouragements, God's blessings to you today. Thank you.